first of all, I'm going to give you a demo on how to roll coils. So start with a piece of clay that is in the plastic stage. And we're not going to use a lot for what I'm demoing here. And it should be wedged that's so we don't have any air pockets. And then what we're going to do to start our coil is actually roll your clay into a ball using your hands. And then roll side to side. Use gentle pressure. And you should be able to get this dog poo sausage shape. It's the best way to start. Then you can actually twist it a little bit just to get it started. And then when we're rolling our coil, we want to use gentle and even pressure and we're rolling from our fingertips to your palm. And it just takes practice, really, it takes practice. Coils should be cylindrical, so more like a tube. And for what we're doing, we're looking for an ideal coil thickness of about one to fourth inch thick. Though, of course, we're just practicing. So to start rolling, I can use one hand, but at some point the coil gets longer because what's happening is as I'm rolling back and forth, I'm moving my hands outward because I'm trying to get the coil to become a little bit longer. Now, couple things. To check if your coil is dry, because sometimes your clay is dry, so what you can do is actually take your coil and bend it, and if this part cracks, then you know your clay is too dry and you need to make it wet again. Sometimes what happens is the student rolls their coil so quickly, they go really fast, and it might break. That's okay. But sometimes the coil flattens out. So if your coil flattens out, which we can actually see here, right? This is wider, this is thinner. What do you do is you move it up on the thin side tap your hand a little bit so it becomes more like a square and then continue rolling. Now this clay here is about one fourth inch thick so I'm going to set that aside. Now sometimes also what happens is the student rolls their coil so quickly it develops a hole. What happens is the clay flattens out and then actually rolls on itself like it folds on itself. That's not good because then you have literally a hole in your coil and we don't want to trap any air. So sometimes what you can do is actually take a tool and cut off that area where the hole is, or you might just have to start over. And sometimes that happens. Again, it just takes practice rolling out coils. So like I said, if your coil breaks, it's not the end of the world, just keep going. But if you keep rolling and the clay gets really thin, the clay is going to eventually break apart like you can see there. Let's learn about some different coil styles that you could use in your coil project. So the first one are called single layers and that's just literally short and long coils and they, they are just, they could, you could place them horizontally, you could place them vertically, so they're just single layers of themselves. They might be one, two, three of them attached together. The next one is called a spiral. So literally what you're doing is you're taking your coil. I'm going to use this one. It's a little thin, but that's okay. Let me even it out a little bit here. And all you do is you literally turn it into a spiral and you just spiral it in on itself. You do not need to score and slip what this is touching. You don't need to score and slip because however we're going to use it, you'd be scoring the top and bottom, right? You don't have to score and slip the inside. So that's an example of a spiral. The other option is a shaped spiral. There's a couple ways you can make a shaped spiral. We can make spirals that are shaped like squares or rectangles. You can also make spirals in the shape of triangles. I've seen students create spirals in the shape of, of petals, like a leaf or a heart. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. It, it really just takes some experimenting. For example, you could start with a regular spiral and then just use your fingers to manipulate the form into what you want, right? Like this is kind of a triangular spiral. Or you could literally form it on your own. So for example, if I want to make this square spiral. Now this is a little tricky because the clay, it, it is soft, but it's very hard to make a perfect 90 degree corner because it's probably going to crack. Now, obviously, I need more clay there to finish the spiral, but you get the idea. Um, now, these are not quite coils, but when you think about lines, right? Think about coils as a line, right? What is a line that's not moving? It's a dot. So that's why we use spheres, right? Spheres are like dots. So to make spheres, you just roll a little bit of clay in your fingers, 
the amount of clay you work with, you end up with different sized spheres. For our project, because we're going to want them to be visible, we do want to use spheres that are about one fourth inch thick. We don't want to use really thick spheres because they'll be too thick. And anything super, super tiny just becomes really difficult to score and slip. Now, how do you make teardrops though? Teardrops are similar to spheres. All you do is you take, you can take a sphere and then manipulate the form. You manipulate the top part just by pulling the top here and you end up with a teardrop, right? It's like a drop of water. So you could do it that way. I've also seen it work where you, you know, start with a really you know, bigger ball of clay. And again, you just manipulate the top here just by pulling it towards yourself and you can end up with teardrops. Now for arches, you do need several coils for this to work. So all you do is there's a couple ways to do arches. You can do arches like this, which we would think is like a rainbow. You can also do an arch like a corner. So for example, I have clay here. Let's clean up that spot. Let me roll out a little bit of this clay. We want this to be somewhat thinner so it'll fit inside here. And this looks a lot better when the bottoms of the arches are more even. And we could leave negative space there. We could also fill it in with just a single layer. So there is a arch. Now the next one is a little more tricky. It's kind of hard to draw. So let me show you how to draw it. It's easy to look at the picture and be like, oh, I can draw that. But let me show you how to draw it. Let me grab some paper here. So I found the best way to draw this type of coil is whoop, start with, oop, let's focus. Start with right there underneath. This did take practice. Yeah. And there you go. So let me show you how to actually create this type of coil. So all you do, again, just like with the spiral, you don't have to score and slip it together. You just take it and just fold it back and forth. And I've seen students do this using really thin coils. You don't have to do this like height. You can go a little bit shorter, but this does work so much better when your clay is in the plastic stage. So like I said, if you're trying to do this and your clay is cracking, it's just too dry. Now the next one is called an S spiral. So this is a spiral where it goes one direction and then it switches and goes another direction. So we're going to actually just use this clay I just used for that um, folded coil. And so it doesn't matter which way you start for your, your spiral, but you do need a significant length of coil. And so then at some point I'm going to twist it around and go a different direction. Now it can be tricky to make one that's perfectly symmetrical on both sides. You can see the side a little bit bigger, but there you go. That is a S spiral. And then the other one, if you go the same direction, but towards each other, that would be like a mustache or like that. <laughs> so a mustache, what you do is you have one spiral go inward and then you take the other spiral and pull it inward. And just like those other, the, you know, just like I said, you don't have to score and slip the interior of here. You just have to make sure, you know, let's say if I was using this, I would score the top and the bottom. And you do and usually end up with a little empty space right there. Now, figure eight is where we're taking a coil and we're gonna actually fold it around itself. So let's see, kind of like an infinity sign. And you do have to score and slip it or mush it together kind of reminds me of like a donut. So there's a figure eight and U-shaped is pretty much a arch but just on its own. So you could go that way or you could go that way. Twisted, now for twisted it can be tricky to draw a twisted coil so I just draw it like I have a twisted piece of bread. Now a twisted coil requires two coils so what you're going to do is place them side by side and they should be long and you're going to just literally wrap them around each other and you do have to kind of fold both pieces at the same time as if you're like making a twisted pretzel 
And I've seen students do this with like really thin coils and then you end up with a twisted piece like that. Our last one in this demo is braided. Now I don't know how to braid, but if you know how to braid hair, you can braid coils. All you do is you take three coils and you wrap them around each other in a pattern. That's my best attempt at drawing it. But there you go, those are the different styles. And now you're going to actually practice using this worksheet.